you know what, Adventure Time crew? If you keep pumping out episodes like these, you take as many hiatuses as you need. You know what? You need money? Here, take it. Go make more episodes. Please. I'm Finn the Pony, and it's time for Finn Bits. So, Preboot and Reboot, a pair of episodes where Finn and friends encounter a cybernetic master of species evolution, meanwhile discovering that Susan Strong may have a connection to her that nobody would have expected. Does this two-part juggernaut evolve the series in a whole new way? Let's find out. One of the main things I've always admired Adventure Time for is that it's not afraid to take risks. It's not afraid to involve some dark themes, it's not afraid to kill off characters, it's not afraid to try out some obscure plot ideas, it's not afraid to spice up stories with some brilliant social commentary, it's not afraid to do its own thing. The writers of this show will gladly put anything into an episode if they feel that it will enhance the story or characters in any way, even if what they add strays off the path of what you'd expect to see in a typical kids show. And wow did this episode explore some unique territory. It really does feel like somewhat of a reboot to the series as a whole, with certain secrets finally being revealed and new ones being created. It starts off like a typical Adventure Time episode with Finn, Jake, and Susan searching for... <clears throat> human artifacts, when in reality they're just exploring an old video arcade. And the assumptions they make based on what they find are pretty hilarious. But everything changes when a gigantic metal narwhal plows straight up from the ground. And after their heroes board this strange vessel, who do they run into but Tiffany, complete with a new cybernetic arm. But if you thought an assumed dead character surviving worm digestion is the weirdest part of this episode, then you ain't seen nothing yet. After boarding this strange looking ship, they finally meet up with the ship's captain known as Dr. Gross, and she introduces them to her bizarre menagerie of creatures, all developed through the magic of artificial evolution. Even the doc herself has had some work done, as we see that under her suit is a normal human like Finn, but with some added robotic enhancements. This brings up one of the most interesting questions of the episode. At its core, is artificial evolution more beneficial or more harmful to living things? In the beginning, Dr. Gross makes a pretty solid case for the process being pretty useful, exclaiming that it's simply a way to help certain species become more special than they already are. Heck, she even lists off a few everyday methods of artificial evolution, like mechanical hearts and even a good old pair of glasses. So in many ways, a lot of humans have been subject to this process without even realizing it. But eventually the episode shows the consequences of what can happen when this type of evolution goes too far. When Susan tries to escape with Finn and Jake, the Doc sends her hybrid army to track them down. But Susan manages to take them all out with a little help from Tiff, surprisingly. We're shown just how reliant Gross is on cybernetic utility, and for the most part, she could do a lot with it. But when such gadgets prove useless and some are even used against her, she ends up in a pretty hopeless situation. So yes, in a way artificial evolution can be helpful, but those that rely on it too heavily will only end up using technology as more of a crutch than a helpful push. And when that crutch is removed, it'll be hard for them to stand on their own. Similar to the freedom of artistic expression message in the thin yellow line, I like seeing arguments that are two-sided and show the positives and negatives of certain situations. It feels a lot more balanced that way. But then we get a reveal of a secret that has been withheld since season two. What lies beneath Susan's cat hat is a robotic mind control chip. And when Finn accidentally reactivates it, she goes on a robotic rampage and tries to capture Finn. This leaves PB, Jake, and the others with the really difficult task of having to stop a Hulk-sized cyborg lady without completely killing her, which is much easier said than done. We can even see the uncertainty with these characters as they try to come up with a solution that doesn't involve destroying their friend, and you're constantly left wondering exactly who's going to live and who's not. And even by the time they do resolve Susan's little chip problem, it's not a complete happy ending. Jake ends up in pretty bad shape and Finn's grass arm, sick of being restricted by him, ends up fusing with the Finn sword to form its own separate entity. Now that's how you do a cliffhanger ending. You hit the audience so hard with the WTF stick that you make them want to watch the next episode right away, even if it's not out yet. Aside from each of the two episodes having a really interesting dilemma, there are a ton of fun little things sprinkled here and there as well, like great nods to previous episodes, such as Finn being immune to electricity, the reference to Tiffany's last appearance, and of course, Jake's suit! We get some usual AT style gags, like the bit with the banana guards, and like I said, the entire intro segment, and overall, it pays homage to the adventures of old while introducing the unique stuff I mentioned earlier. If I had any complaints at all, I would say that Rattleball's death felt really unceremonious and kinda unnecessary. 
I mean, this guy had a whole episode dedicated to him, and he gets taken out without even putting in a good fight? I get that it was meant to further push this whole yabba dabba dabba mystery, where characters that die are getting capacitated under this phrase for some reason. Heck, maybe it's connected in some way to bring them back to life. Wouldn't be the first time this show's done that. But bottom line, I didn't really think it was needed. Also, this song felt kind of weak. Not super awful, but also not super catchy either. It was a neat little way to show off the bizarrely creative creatures that Dr. Gross had cooked up, but I wouldn't really go out of my way to listen to it on its own. Overall though, Preboot and Reboot was not only a two-part special that was well worth the wait, but it managed to combine everything that makes Adventure Time awesome with some extra elements that I honestly wasn't expecting. The characters were their awesome selves, with some having a few interesting reveals. The premise was a perfect blend of freshness and familiarity, and the ending made me thirsty for more adventure. Episodes like this make me feel that AT really wants to go out with a bang before it's confirmed cancellation. And if they keep chugging out winners like this, you can bet that I'll be with them every single step of the way. Well, I hope you all enjoyed my quick little playthrough of this episode, and feel free to tell me what you thought of this episode in the comments below. Was this episode duo a perfect combination of the pre and the re? What will become of characters like Jake, Rattleballs, and the new Grass Finn? Well, one thing's for certain, Finn's gonna need a new arm again. Maybe he can go the Tiffany route and get a robot one. It certainly suited Farmworld Finn pretty well. Thanks for playing along with me. I'm Finn the Pony, and I'll see you all next time on Finn Mix.